Once beyond the Hurlston Lock flight is a short run to another junction, this time with the Middlewich branch, which runs from Barbridge Junction here, a slightly difficult turn that one, to the Trenton Mersey at Middlewich, by way of the shortest canal in the country. At the, at the other end of this stretch, the 50 yards of the Wardle Canal was built by the Trenton Mersey Canal Company so they could charge heavy tolls on boats coming from its rival company's canals. Middlewich Branch is 10 miles long and was first planned as part of the Chester Canal in 1772, uh, but cash shortages meant uh, construction didn't begin until 1827. It was also, oddly, the location for trials with uh, locomotive haulage of boats um, just before the turn of the last century, um, using a narrow gauge uh, engine from the Crew Railway Works. But we continue north and we come to the first reminder that this section was originally built for boats coming from the River Dee at Chester and we encounter our first wide locks, a pair of them in fact. Like Norbury Junction further south, Bunbury Locks is a working wharf. These days home to one of the Anglo-Welsh hire fleets and they keep a friendly eye on the staircase locks along with occasional volunteer lock keepers. There's a special technique with these paired wide locks uh, and some boaters take a little convincing when you tell them that boats can travel up and down at the same time, at least with one boat going in one direction and two in the other. The old stables are from the days of horse boating and they're particularly well preserved here. The whole area is a bit of a tourist attraction. It's a picturesque and timeless location in the Cheshire countryside and it's not long before a couple more pop up in the landscape a pair of rather dramatic castles, in fact. Beeston Castle is one of the most dramatic ruins in the English landscape. Built by Ranulf, the sixth Earl of Chester in the 1220s, it incorporates the banks and ditches of an Iron Age hill fort. It was a royal castle until surrendered during the Civil War and partially demolished. When this canal was in full swing, the Peckforton estate, including Beeston Castle, was bought by John Tolomash, who commissioned a Gothic mansion, Peckforton Castle, on another hill you can see to the south. Now, by that time, Beeston's ruins were an integral part of Peckforton's landscape, and they were intended to provide a view and a talking point for Tolomash and his guests. Beeston is now run by English Heritage, while Peckforton is a very upmarket hotel and wedding venue. You can walk to Beeston from the canal, although it's a very steep ascent. Many boaters prefer to pause by the Shady Oak pub, where you can see both hillside castles through the summer heat haze and enjoy a pint or a meal, or both. Onwards and northwards, you arrive at the village of Beeston itself, here there's a curious and unique cast iron lock designed by Thomas Telford to deal with difficult ground conditions. These days it can't quite cope with two boats at once. It's moved inward slightly. This is also home to a canal institution, the Chas Harden Hire Firm, established for over 40 years at the historic Beeston Castle Wharf and one of the very few family hire fleets still run and owned by the original family. Now Chester is almost in sight now and many boaters pause at Christleton before dropping down the handful of locks into the city itself. Christleton is an attractive commuter village, some of which sits between the main road and the canal and there are a couple of pubs and there used to be a boatyard here but no longer alas. Now we need to be ready for the penultimate stage of our journey northwards as we drop down into Chester in the next episode.